Now, Positively Ernie with Ernie Anastas, a New York TV legend and radio host with great positive stories and interviews. Thanks, Ernie. You're the best. And now, here's Ernie. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Nice to have you here today. You know, I love positive stories and, and bringing you information and things that can make your life better and happier in many ways. Dealing with reality and at the same time, you know, trying to find solutions to problems. Well, uh, I don't think we have a problem with, with eating for the most part because most people love to eat. I do, that's for sure. And, and, I, and I'm bringing on somebody today that's a very special friend. Her name is Alexa Matthews and Alexa is a sweetheart because she is just a, a genuine person who works so hard to make people happy. And Alexa, I'm so happy to have you on the I'm show. so happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you for having me today. Well, people should know that, you know, you have something called Eating NYC. Yes. And uh, you started that back in when, 2014? 2014? Yes, 2014. 2014. And, and now you've got like 300,000 followers and, and you handle everything from food to fitness to leisure, lifestyle, travel. You must be having a, go- a real ball doing that, right? Yeah, I am. And I really am lucky that I love what I do so much. Oh, how did you get into that? So I started out, I started just for fun as a hobby. Um, and it became monetizable and became a business. I have a background in the hospitality industry. So yeah. I was doing marketing and PR, working for a restaurant group. And then I kind of got to a point where I was ready to take it on as my full-time job. So Well, you've done a great job with it because you have you. a lot of followers, obviously. You're an influencer. But, I mean, you have to keep up with so many trends, okay? I have a lot of things to talk to you about today. I want to start with food, okay? Uh, how, has, how has the restaurant business changed, you know, post-COVID and all of that that's happened to us? It's, it's definitely very different. I think the way people approach dining out and food uh, is definitely different. I think people see dining out as a way to connect with other people. They see it as a social experience. Experience. Mm-hmm. They're looking to have an experience when they dine out. Yeah. And I think they're more cautious about where they're going and they see dining out as an expense. So they're more particular about where they go and they really want to enjoy and have an experience. And when they do go out, they really want to have a drink yeah. and dessert and really have, have the time. full, ex- have a good time. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. right. And but connect with people. You know, uh, Alexa, you, you also mentioned, you know, the cost. Yes. And, and I think, you know, when you talk to most people, they'll say, you know, I like going out to restaurants, as you just described, but it gets a little costly sometimes. Even, for example, and, and you've got two young children at home, right? Two and a half and how many months? Nine months. And nine months. Congratulations, Thank by you. the way. So you know what it's like to, to have a family. Yes. And a lot of people, you know, that we know will say even going to a fast food restaurant, for example, has gotten expensive. Absolutely. Yeah. Why? Totally. Why, 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 why? I think the cost it? of inflation, I think since COVID, the price of food has really gone up even you know just going to the supermarket and shopping it's really a lot of money food is becoming an expense and i think in all facets people are looking for ways to save Uh, and obviously dining out is expensive so i think that's definitely a pain point for the restaurant industry Mm. as well yeah i I know you cover restaurants and so forth but food in general you think more people are also trying to cook at home i mean for for fun you know, it's fun to do it, but also save some money. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think for during COVID, it was definitely fun to see, yeah. you know, people are baking banana bread and <laughs> sourdough and all this stuff. But I think uh, now more than ever, people are like, okay, let's, you know, cook at home. Let's save some money. Yeah. So what what's hot in the cuisine field right now? What, what, what food? I mean, a lot of people like, you know, Spanish, uh, Mexican food, uh, you know, French food is always kind of popular uh, and Italian as well. So run it down for us. Okay. What are the hot trends? Well, Italian food has always been number one in yeah. New York City for sure. I think that there are more Italian restaurants in the city than anywhere, I think, in the country. But um, I would say uh, in New York City in particular, there has been a huge increase in omakase, which is a sushi style that the mm. chef chooses while you eat. Yeah. I think we're seeing a lot more of that in different price ranges. I think it used to be something that was a little more unattainable. It was maybe upwards of two or three hundred dollars, and now you're seeing ones that are under a hundred. Mm. Yeah, uh, omakase is huge. In terms of trends, I would say the biggest trend is the increase in technology in restaurants. Technology, you're seeing AI. Absolutely. Right. I think some of this started during COVID uh, where it was contactless ordering. So you would just scan a code and you can order and you wouldn't even have to interact with anyone uh, during your meal. And we're seeing more of that post-COVID, even though 
kind of juxtaposing yeah, with how yeah, people yeah, want to sure. connect when they eat out. But right. uh, there's no denying that this increase in technology is imminent and is changing the space. There are a lot more ghost kitchens, which mm. is a concept that uh, maybe you have one kitchen and there are 10 restaurants o- operating under one kitchen. Under one kitchen, yeah. And save money that way, sa- don't Right, yeah. right. You save Operate. on rent and, yeah. and people just go in, they have an app, they order. They can order from 10 different restaurants in one on one app and then mm-hmm. they pick up the food and go home. Mm. So it's just a totally different experience than, you know, the traditional yeah, exactly. dining out. Lexa, let me ask you this too, because, you know, because you follow so much of what's going on in the food industry and there have been a lot of changes, you know, globalization and, you know, g- getting food from different parts of the world and so forth. Some people get a little concerned about that and uh, there are food allergies that people watch out for and I think they're a little more concerned about that now because you do see signs, let us know if you had any, a- any food allergies and talk about children because, you know, a- as a mom, uh, you understand what what about restaurants for you know for children? Let's let's start with that first. What 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 do you see there in terms of what you should be watching for? I think in general people are just hyper aware about what they're eating. Yeah. And hyper aware, you know, I went to a restaurant recently and ordered a burger, and they said it was a grass fed beef burger. Mm. They made a point to mention what kind of beef we were eating, right? Which, yeah. which That was the first time I heard that, but I think people are just really concerned. Is it organic? Is it not? What kind of oil are you using? Right. Are you using a seed oil, an inflammatory oil? People just want to know. And I think, uh, you know, when you eat out, you, you don't necessarily know that. So you're going in right. with that risk. Uh, obviously, with children too, you want to give them the best options, but I think, unfortunately, when you eat out, the restaurants are looking to save costs, you know, so uh, they might not be giving you the best ingredients. So I think that's kind of a risk you have to take. I think more people are asking questions now. Oh, absolutely. As as you go in and say, okay, well, what's in this? What about cannabis processing? Because that's another issue that a lot of people are, are thinking about. I think, you know, that was really, really hot, I would say, in like 2019. I think every cafe had a CBD drink. Right. It was like ridiculous. It was everywhere. I, I don't see that as much now, mm. um, but there are a lot more of those, you know, stores popping up around uh, the city particularly. Uh-huh. But in terms of restaurant using it, I don't see it as much. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, th- th- there's always something that we have to think about. Oh, yeah. Uh, f- food is such a great topic because we could talk about this forever. In terms of a trend, you know, something that we can look forward to in the future. Is there something on the horizon, something that, that that's brewing out there, pardon the pun, that we should know about? I think there's a lot of restaurants really looking to give people more than just a dining experience. Ah. And what that means is an experience, which is what people want. They want to go to a restaurant and really think they're having, really feel like they're having a show, whether they're presenting the food to you at the table a certain way, there's some kind of presentation, some element of a show, or there's dancing, more than just a dining experience. Some type experience. of activity. You right, know? right. Yeah. I think that's, I think that is coming in hand with people looking at dining as an experience rather than just let's go eat dinner. Mm-hmm. So I think the restaurants, you know, in New York City, they're, that's part of their goal now. What else are we offering? I think right. part of that is a competition here. Yeah, you know, there's yeah, so yeah, many yeah. restaurants. How do you stand out? Sure. So, you know, making it fun for people. Yeah, some type of a fun experience. Yes. With 300,000 followers, what kind of questions do you get? Do people, you know, ask you, you know, f- certain things that you have to respond to? G- give us an idea. I mean, people are always asking me where to eat all the time. Yeah. I mean, I do have a guide on my website where you can search by cuisine, neighborhood price, but people want to hear from me first. Uh Um, But it's always rewarding to feel that I've helped someone, uh, whether they have advice on where to eat, where to go. They're visiting New York for the first time. Mm -hmm. Where do they need to try or how do they get a reservation at this restaurant? Right, right. Uh, You name it. We have a lot of choices Alexa, oh, yes. that's for sure. Oh, yes. Hey, look, uh, we're talking about food, and we're also talking about travel and leisure. Uh, Alexis Matthews is a, an expert in this area. Uh, let's talk a little bit about travel. I was reading about how people are looking for coolcations, C-O-O-L, coolcations, <laughs> because, you know, w- with changing temperatures uh, and climate change and so forth, you know, it gets pretty hot. And people are saying, I want to go someplace where I can cool off, like, you know, Finland and, and Iceland and places like that. What, what, do, what do you know about that? I actually have a few friends who have traveled to Iceland recently yeah. uh, with kids as well. And I think uh, it's not as expensive as other places. It's not so far uh, 
the flight in Finland is far, but Iceland is not, and it's beautiful. So I think people are maybe trying to go off the beaten path a little bit. I think people are really craving travel. Yeah. Um, maybe that's another post-COVID thing. You Could know, be. people feel like they really need to get out, and uh, it's a great option. Everyone mm. I know who's been there has loved it. So. You know, there, there, are, there are astro vacations now, too. People are thinking about, you know, it's expensive if you want to travel out of space and have that experience. <laughs> that, that can be heavy yeah. duty. But a lot of people are saying, you know, I want to go somewhere far out where I can, you know, do some stargazing and be able to see something that looks really natural, you know, that, that may spoil in time. So how can I take advantage of, of being part of this astrological experience? That's fun, isn't it? That's fun, and it speaks a lot to the time we're in that people are craving uh, sky and stars. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> to be out there and just to... Right. It's a kind of an old-fashioned feeling, you know, to be totally. out there in the open sky. But I get it, but I get especially it. Especially if you live in a big city. Especially people in New York City, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't get to see the stars. I mean, my son is looking at night, the stars, I'm like... Sorry, There's, you can't see them here. <laughs> Let's get a telescope here, right? Right, right, right. Hey, remember the movie The Holiday? That was a great one. They, they were swapping homes. Now, I understand that's another trend right now, home swapping. People are saying, you know what? Uh, we'll swap homes. I can stay there longer. Uh, it might cost less. Have you heard about that trend? I have not. Is this like a branch off of Airbnb? I, I guess. You know, people are just thinking that this is, this is a great way to do it. I wonder what happens if they never want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> they like happen, the new right? home right? i like this so much <laughs> yeah, I don't i'm, leave. I'm <laughs> staying here oh man you know there are so many wild things that people are experiencing but but travel is a great experience especially uh for young kids because they can yes. learn so much about culture and diversity and cuisine and everything else i'm sure you get a lot of questions about that absolutely and i think people i think the younger generation like you said are many of them are working remotely they don't have to be committed to any space. So they're, you know, if they want to work from LA or Mexico, they can do that. And that's just a totally different experience than I had when I was that age. Yeah, so. yeah. I think that they call it be leisure. And they're combining business with leisure. The people are saying, yeah, like you just said, I can go someplace, I can relax and be out there and I can still do my work. It's amazing. I don't know how long uh, businesses will allow that, but for as long as they are, it sounds amazing to me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, listen, you have to keep up with all of these trends. Totally. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you about leisure time. Uh, we just talked a little bit about business and leisure combined. But, you know, fitness and taking care of yourself and, and, and utilizing your time. Good advice that you pass along to all of your 300,000 followers. What, what should we be thinking about when we want to relax personally and also as a family activity? Uh, I would say, I mean... For personal time, it's it's definitely hard, but, you know, prioritize self-care. If you want to get that workout in, prioritize it, and it'll make you feel better, and you'll never regret doing that workout, whether it's at home or yeah. if you can get out for a little bit, go for a run. I think that's uh, it's super important. I think people are always talking about it, especially now, you know, self-care and your mental health, and I think it is so important, yeah. uh, especially with just times feel crazier than ever. People are busier than ever, so just... Taking a beat, taking a time for yourself, I think is so, so important. And family activities are important too. I think, I think more people, especially, you know, after we experience COVID, more, more families are saying, let's spend quality time Absolutely. together. Absolutely. I think that's the most valuable time and the most fun time is just yeah. being with your family, uh, whether you're getting out to a museum, going to the park, or just doing everyday things. I mean, yeah. we have little children, so it's, you know, everything is an adventure for them, whether yeah. we're going to the supermarket or right. you know the hardware store whatever it is they're learning they're taking it in and and that's how they're building their memories that's their childhood exactly so as an influencer you know and and you you have to keep up with everything we're looking for maybe something that you can share with our audience some kind of a secret something that we should know about some terrific fun restaurant i mean you were talking about having an experience like that something that we can pass along to everybody because i get a lot of people traveling into new york city and is there one or two things that you could tell us about i can tell you about a really great restaurant yeah. i tried recently that's kind of encompasses everything we've spoken about yeah, go ahead. um so it's a, it's called coco Dock. it's a japanese a korean fried chicken concept and they have this uh bucket feast so it's kind of like a group dining experience. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so it's very trendy, very lively, and 
It's basically like the concept is like it's a tasting menu, but it's fried chicken. Fried chicken. Yeah. So you go in and it's not what you think you have. You can get a caviar top. They called it a golden nugget. A caviar top huh. piece of fried chicken. Yeah. And the whole uh, kind of stick is that the chicken, the chicken that you're eating, the chickens have been fed scraps from Michelin star restaurants. So speaking oh, how about interesting. <laughs> wow. So speaking about wow. caring where your food is coming from, yeah, right? They're telling that. you these chickens have eaten the finest food. So unbelievable. <laughs> oh, that's a great story. Right. Now, the name of the restaurant again and where? Uh, Coco Dock. It's in Flatiron. Yeah. And it just opened. It's from uh, Simon Kim who opened Coat. Oh yeah. You may have heard of that one. Yeah, so this sure. is his new concept. So it's. It's just, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, are I they think busy it's, right now? They're oh, they're get, packed. They're packed. They're packed, And, yes. and now with all of this publicity they're getting, they're uh, yeah, even oh, more yeah, packed. They, right, right. Okay, I like that one. Anything else that you can share with us? Because, I mean, you know, you're always out there. By the way, do you go to a lot of these restaurants to test them out yourself? Oh, absolutely. You have to go to I them, I have right? to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. that's, I, I assume that. That's the most fun part of my job, How do you job, keep your sure. weight down? I mean, that's not easy. I'm um, chasing all the kids, time. chasing Taking little boys. Taking <laughs> Yeah, that, that's one of the problems. When, when I watch some of the cooking shows sometimes, uh, you know, I, I often wonder, how do you maintain your weight? Because it's so good to eat that oh food. Oh, my God, it is. It's delicious. It is. It's, I think that's, that's probably the most fun part of my job. But the second, my second favorite part is the people. The people yeah. in the hospitality industry are just right. are great. Really? Alexa, let me ask you something. Uh, what do you think is really great about our country? What's good about America? Because, you know, you're tuned into what's happening in New York. But overall, you know, you're, you're very much aware of a lot of the things that we talked about. What's, what can you say about America that's really good that you can share? I would say the resilience. I think we're resilience. a really resilient uh, country. Not only are we at the forefront of so many trends, not just culinary, but I think we're resilient. I think, you know, especially here in New York, but everywhere. We've been through a lot. We're going through a lot, but we're always coming back. We're always bouncing back, whether it was from COVID or wh whatever it is we're experiencing. I think, you know, Americans are resilient. I like that. I yeah. like that a lot. That's good. Now, a lot of people travel uh, and they go to different cities for business or for pleasure and so forth. When you travel, what suggestions do you have in terms of where you can find the best restaurants to go to. What what source do you look for? Instagram. I always Instagram. look on Instagram. Absolutely. Because it's visual. So you can really, you know, f and food is visual. So you can really see what it is that you're going to be eating. And, you know, now people are posting a lot of videos or reels. So you can yeah. not only see the food, but hear them sp speaking about it. And I think you're getting a really good understanding of where you're going i think and you feel comfortable with that you you, you trust the information because a lot of people say well i'm not sure if it's paid you know whether they set it up themselves or this is an actual report i think you can get a good enough picture and um i think with a lot of food when you look at it you know if mm. you want to eat it or not yeah. <laughs> good one last question guy i always like to ask this one if you could pass along some words of advice to a newborn baby and here you are a, a new mom in many ways um, some advice that you would give a child, a little baby, and they would tuck it away, and then at a later time in life when they can understand it better, uh, what information would you give to a little baby today to remember something that would be helpful? Uh, to, I mean, it's, it's simple, but it's even at this time, I'm always thinking about it, to really appreciate each moment because it's never going to come back. Right. You know, I think in life we're always waiting for the next thing to happen. Mm-hmm. Through every stage, when you're a kid, you're, you know, waiting to get on the soccer team or waiting to get into college yes. or waiting to live on your own, right. waiting to get married. I feel like we're always waiting, looking forward to the next thing. And it's so important yeah. to just stop and appreciate the time that you have because you'll never have it again. All good. Before yeah. we go, Alexa, let everybody know how they can reach you, okay? Where they go and, and what kind of information they can expect. So you can find me on Instagram at EatingNYC. Um, that's really... I have a website as well. You can use my search to search for restaurants. You can read about restaurant reviews, but um, I am on Instagram. That's where you can find me. Love it. You're, you're great. You know what? Now we've been talking about all... I'm hungry. It's almost lunch time. <laughs> lunch time. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Alexa Matthews, fantastic Thanks guest. Thanks for having Loved me. having you on board. Congratulations to all you do. Congratulations with your nice family too, your children. Thank you. And I uh, look forward to seeing you around town pretty Thanks soon. Thanks a okay? lot. Bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alexa Matthews. Thank, Thank you, you for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye.